Hi, Attorney Roy Oppenheim here. First and foremost, on behalf of my staff and my partners, I want to wish all of you a very happy and healthy 2021. May it be better for all of us. I want to talk today about homestead. It's a concept that those of us who live in Florida take for granted, but for the rest of the country, it's an unusual legal construct. And if you're coming down from New York or New Jersey or Illinois, and it's the first time you're coming to Florida, it's very important that you understand Florida homestead. It, it's part of the Florida Constitution. It's been the Constitution for many years, and its main purpose was to help bring people down from, to Florida, uh, really prior to air conditioning, so that uh, they would have an opportunity to come down here, even if they had judgments against them. And so once you came to Florida, the homestead protection prevented your judgment creditors from attaching your primary residence. So if you're coming to Florida and you have judgments against you and you buy a home, those judgments will not attach to your home. But more importantly, if you are in a high risk kind of industry, whether you're a professional, a doctor, an architect, an accountant, even a lawyer, it's possible that if you get sued one day, those judgments will never attach to your primary residence. Now there's some caveats to that and I wanna go through them very, very clearly. And it's in the Florida Constitution. One is that the homestead exemption only applies if you live in a municipality, in a city, in an incorporated town, and the home that you live in does not exceed half an acre. If it exceeds more than half an acre, it's gonna be prorated, the, the exemption. If you live in an unincorporated municipality, I mean, outside of a municipality and in a county, an area that's not incorporated as a, as a town, you can live in, a, in on a farm or a large piece of property that does not exceed 160 acres. So it's half an acre in a municipality and not exceeding 160 acres outside of a municipality. So that's the first part of Homestead. The second part of Homestead is that when you buy a home and, it, and you live in Florida and you're a resident and you, and you file the appropriate application, which you can find on our website and our blog, and we'll make sure you, it's available to you at the SouthFloridaLawBlog.com or at OppenheimLaw.com, uh, you get an exemption that's worth approximately $1,000 when you're buying a home. So for example, if you're buying a home and it's worth $300,000 and you get a $50,000 exemption, you're gonna save about $1,000 because on average we pay about 2% on our, on our real property taxes here. And if that property is not going to be now 200,000 but only 150, that $50,000 exemption that you're provided through the Florida Homestead is worth about $1,000 a year to you. Uh, every situation may be slightly different, so you should call us and we'll talk about it. But the, the Florida homestead, as it relates to uh, another construct, and that is through uh, the estate issues and also uh, divorce, also affects uh, people who are coming down. And a lot of times people have old wills, old prenuptials, and those all need to be reevaluated and looked at when you come to the state of Florida as it uh, relates to homestead. Now, I won't get into the technicalities, but a lot of these, these trusts and wills as well as possibly a, a prenuptial agreement may be impacted by Florida Homestead and has not been addressed in, in your current documents. So when you come down here, what we usually like to recommend is that people Floridize their documents, their, their trust documents, their estates, their power of attorneys, uh, their, their living wills, things of that nature, and of course, any prenuptial or postnuptial agreements, agreements. So again, on behalf of my staff and my partners, I wanna wish you all a very healthy, healthy and happy new year. And may it be better for all of us. Take care.